In the early 1950s, Ray Kroc, a milkshake machine salesman, traveled to San Bernardino, California to find out why in the world Richard and Maurice McDonald bought 10 milkshake mixing machines for their small hamburger stand. There he saw a revolutionary method of preparing food and decided it could be replicated all over the country. What started as a small family business in the 1940s California today counts more than 40,000 locations globally, serves 69 millions of people a day in over 100 countries, and operates as a real estate company. But the real legacy of the Golden Arches is a little bit more than the compact menu, the drive-in, the fries or the clown. In this episode of The Blank Note, I want to explore how one of the most iconic USA exports helped to shape the American way of life. The end of World War II found the American life shifting gears with tremendous speed. And just as the diner made its way from a train wagon to a drive-in restaurant, the restaurant also wanted to be part of the race. The McDonald brothers didn't create the concept of fast food, but they were the ones to put it best to use. Inspired by Henry Ford's assembly line, they adopted a fast way of serving food, what is today called the speedy service system. Understanding their clients' needs, they abandoned the multi-choice menu and focused instead on just nine items. Hamburgers, cheeseburgers, three soft drinks, milk, coffee, potato chips, and pie. They swapped silverware for plastic and cardboard ones to cut the dishwasher off. Each of its 12-person crew specialized in a specific task, and much of the food was pre-assembled. The brothers worked with a local craftsman to invent a new kind of spatula, a new dispenser that squirted the same amount of ketchup and mustard every time, and a rotating platform to speed up the process of assembling a burger, bun and condiments. A McDonald's meal was quickly prepared, sometimes even before the order was placed, taking just a couple of minutes to make a customer happy. Sure, obesity and high cholesterol are part of the bundle, but as we look back on its effect on society, one of the most prominent ones has to do with its position in the family. As the modern American mother picked up more and more shifts at work, a classic McDonald's meal was a way to give mom a day off from cooking, meaning a very happy sugary and oily day for the whole family. Secondly, knowing exactly what she was going to get meant security. So no matter where in the States your lunch break was to take place, a McDonald's meal was one of few life certainties, especially in the fast lane of the American work culture. A fast and cheap alternative way of eating out meant a lot. But perhaps the biggest influence the conglomerate has passed on to generations is the business model itself. The idea of the business format franchise seems to have started in the 1890s with Canadian Martha Matilda Harper. She built an international network of beauty salons. But it was 1950s fast food that gave the franchise its modern form, with not only McDonald's, but Burger King, Kentucky Fried Chicken, and many now forgotten brands. The McDonald's brothers were happy with their local business, and training people to implement Speedy system in their own business for a few bucks more was also okay. But opening the same store, same operation, same name on a different location was nuts to them. And that is where Ray Kroc's business vision came to take over not only the hamburger stand, but the whole of America, and maybe a little bit more. Once Kroc bought the business from the brothers, McDonald's was not only selling the right to use the company's name and learn its methods, but they were imposing an obligation to do things in a certain way. Besides licensees and a small portion of company-operated restaurants, the most money comes from franchising. From 40,000 restaurants globally, 93% of them are franchised. McDonald's generally owns or secures a long-term lease on the land and building for the restaurant location, and the franchisee pays for equipment, signs, seating and decor. After the initial investment, the franchisee has to pay rent and other forms of real estate interest, generally for periods of 20 years, a business model that inspired many of the prevalent franchises we see today. Besides the Hamburger University in Chicago, where students are trained in subjects such as which kinds of potatoes to buy, be it for a summer job or a career choice, according to the company itself, one in eight Americans has had a job there 
preparing entire generations of workers with skills and training. Welcome to McDonald's, may I help you? Calling it a brand does not make it justice. McDonaldization is now a concept. According to George Ritzer in his 1993 book, The McDonaldization of Society, this is a phenomenon that occurs when society, its institutions and its organization are adopted to have the same characteristics that are found in fast food chains. These include efficiency, calculability, predictability and standardization, and control. Two decades after its creation, in 1967, McDonald's opens its first international restaurant in Canada. But even before the name started franchising around the world, its fame had already crossed the borders. Pushed by a crazy successful marketing in commercials and movies, the yellow dose of happiness had already cemented itself in the image of the American way of life to outside audiences. When McDonald's opens a restaurant in Pushkin Square, Moscow in 1990, according to the restaurant's website, it served more than 30,000 Russian citizens on the first day. The cultural status of the restaurant honors the date as a symbolic moment in the end of the Cold War. Sure, the new generations tend to gravitate towards healthier choices, local ones, but to the generation of Home Alone, the Sony Walkman and baggy jeans, McDonald's still represents the greasy, loud urban American ID. And this is still the case. Wherever there is a new opening in any corner of the world, if a McDonald's opens a location in your city, it feels like you're part of the good old all is well America. There was never a McDonald's in Albania, the country I grew up in. But the strong feeling of wanting a piece of Hollywood made us settle for counterfeit versions of it. As long as the fries yellow and the ketchup's red is present in a fast food store, it feels like America. But the world has changed. There is a lot of public pressure from the press and numerous lawsuits. Critics consistently point to the chain as a symbol of American issues with obesity. Labor movements often targeted for its business and hiring practices. But hey, it all started with two brothers who fired their servers and opted for drive-in instead, serving cheap burgers. On the flip side, even though the behemoth of fast food is still unshaken, every time the company is forced to make a change in the menu or in its organization, it is very probable that the rest of the industry will follow. Ying Yang.